This is Question of the Week from BU Today. What is the future of travel in 2022? With COVID restrictions loosening across the country, many industry experts predict that travel will return to pre-pandemic levels in the coming year, with people taking big, ambitious trips after two years of being stuck at home. But the travel industry is not the same as it was, and people's attitudes towards travel changed greatly during the pandemic. Destination road trips surged. The ability to work and learn remotely prompted people to book flexcations. And hotels continued to battle with sites like Airbnb and Verbo for reservations. To understand how the travel industry is changing, BU Today executive editor Doug Most spoke with Makaran Modi, associate professor of hospitality marketing at the School of Hospitality Administration, who shed some light on the future of travel in 2022 and beyond. Macaron, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Doug. Pleasure to be here. So let's start with the really big, broad question, the future of travel. What do you see as the future of travel, given where we've just been for the last two years, which is essentially in our living rooms, on our couches? What do you see as the future of travel? That's a great question, Doug. And I think to look at the future of travel, um, we have to look at the past as well as sort of where we're going in the future. I think the future of travel is going to be determined by two factors, really. The first is the demand side of the equation, which is us as travelers um, and as consumers. Like you said, we've been restricted to our homes, to our couches for the last couple of years now. That naturally leads to a lot of pent up demand for travel. I think also people have been reevaluating their lives and what's really important to them in the last two years. And you know, travel seems to have emerged as one of those things that people don't want to push too much longer be it to meet family and relatives or sort of that dream vacation that you've been planning for a while. So I think we'll see some of that emerge. We we have seen it already. The hospitality and travel business did see a fairly successful rebound in 2021. And I anticipate that that will continue in 2022. Of course, there's uh, a lot happening in the world that does moderate that to some extent, politically and, and economically. But I do think that pent up demand is going to lead to a strong year for the industry. The other side of the equation, like I mentioned, is uh, the supply side. And, you know, 2020 was a really hard year for businesses in general from just a revenue perspective, from a labor perspective. We saw some of that rebound in 2021 as well. We still see businesses, in a sense, almost struggling to keep up with demand in so many ways. But I think 2022 and 23 will be those years of stabilization. And I think we'll see the resilience of the industry as it bounces back. I think COVID sort of put some things into perspective for the industry. You know, we enjoyed 12 years of solid growth before 2020 and then the pandemic hit. I, I wonder just with, you know, issues around climate change and, and geopolitical tensions globally, I think we're going to see a lot more of that in the next 10 years than we perhaps did in the last 10. So I think just from a longer term future perspective, yeah, I think the industry is going to have to prepare at least on the supply side, the business side to be more resilient than it perhaps did from 2010 to 2020. Are there certain types of trips that you think people will be taking, especially in the early weeks and months coming out of this pandemic? There seems to be, and maybe this is not surprising, an ambition for big trips that people are sort of like, I just spent two years indoors. I saved a lot of money by not traveling. I want to spend. I want to go. I want to do. Uh, Do you think there is going to be that pivot to sort of big ambitious trips right off the bat? Or do you think it's going to be smaller trips and road trips, maybe not quite as ambitious? Well, I think uh, for the last two years, we saw a lot of the less ambitious travel actually happen. So, you know, the road trips, the trips within the state, states nearby, something that you could get to easily um, to a space that you could potentially isolate and still be away from people. I think, you know, this idea of of getting on a plane is not as foreign to us anymore as it perhaps was last year. Even people are feeling a lot more comfortable, particularly if you are vaccinated and boosted to get on a plane. Just for my own life, my neighbors who have two young boys, uh, they got on a plane and went to Aruba for 10 days this week. You know, they felt like they were confident enough with the vaccines, but also having contracted COVID a couple of months ago. So I think we'll see some of that. Some of the bigger trips definitely start to happen. And there's an appetite and also people have saved up money. So you'll see some of that pent up spending as well. There's been a new term that sort of has evolved in the last a couple of years, again, with the remote learning and the remote work environment that we're all experiencing now, uh, called flexcation. And I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about that, whether this is something that we're going to see long term. 
You know, it's interesting, Doug, and, and that certainly seems to be something we're seeing now. And, you know, we will see for the next couple of years, perhaps. You know, my hypothesis here, though, is I wonder how soon that actually catches up with people. One of the things the pandemic has done is, and we've all experienced it, it's blurred the lines between work and personal life because, you know, we're working all the time, but we're also at home all the time. I wonder to what extent that will catch up with people. You know, when I'm on vacation, I want to be away from my laptop and I want to be away from from being at work and I just want to look at the sunset at the beach. So I think we're doing some of that now for sure. And, you know, particularly with remote work, there's a length of stay element that comes in here. If you are planning on staying at a destination for longer, where you think you're going to be traveling for a month, it is harder to obviously not be working for a full month. So I think we'll see some of the work happen in those situations. But, you know, for the traditional vacation, let's say I'm going away for five to seven days. I think those are opportunities that people would like to use to completely dissociate from work and just disconnect. Certainly before the pandemic, we had already seen the explosive growth of sites like Airbnb and VRBO. I'm curious if we think the pandemic will accelerate that. Or do you think you might see people starting to go back to the hotel and the resort sort of uh, stays? We've been doing some research around this to see how people's choices between hotels and Airbnbs changed during the pandemic and how we think it's going to evolve in the future. You know, undoubtedly, Airbnb did see that bump up, right? Their recovery was super strong compared to even hotels because people wanted that privacy. People wanted the space. They didn't want to be encountering other guests as they would at a hotel. But, you know, you do that long enough. And I think, you know, we're at a at a point in society where people are craving that social connect again. People are craving that contact. We want to be around other people and we're more comfortable doing that. And I do believe that hotels and sort of more of the traditional hospitality industry does have the opportunity to offer that to a better extent than Airbnb does. You know, Airbnb has this narrative around connecting with places and people where you travel. But the reality is, if you're staying at a home, in all likelihood, it's going to be owned by a host who you'll never meet. You're not really going to have extensive local contact. You aren't aren't necessarily embedded in the local community, the local neighborhood necessarily. I think hotels have had those trends for a long time. And I do anticipate that we'll see people craving that social connect a little bit more, which I do think works out for hotels and the traditional hospitality industry better over the longer run. Lastly, I just would like to talk for a minute about city travel versus uh, more adventure travel and resorts and that sort of thing. You know, I have not personally been to New York City in more than two years. And, you know, my family, we, we loved going to New York. But I've said to myself that sort of I don't want to go back to New York until I'm really comfortable that I'm going to be able to enjoy New York the way I want to enjoy New York. You know, I want to be able to do everything with a lot of freedom. And if I have to go back and really feel restricted, it won't be as fun. And I'm curious if you think that people traveling to cities is perhaps going to lag behind some of the other types of vacations. Or do you think people are ready to go back to big cities for vacations? I'd say it's a little bit of both. Uh, I think there was a little bit of a lag for sure in 2021, where people were still not 100% certain about going to the cities and, and to your point whether they'd be able to enjoy the city in the same way. No, that said, I was actually in New York City um, around sort of the middle of December 2021 last year and just a little bit before Christmas. And Doug, the city was packed. There was travelers from all parts of the country, but also seemingly a lot of international travelers in as well. And, and that's just New York City as an attraction, what it has to offer, particularly around Christmas. You know, we were bumping shoulders with other people trying to, trying to see the tree at Rockefeller Center. So I, I do think, particularly as we go into 22, you know, cases worldwide, if we do see a little bit of a dip in it, I, I do think cities are going to make a comeback. The U.S. cities are certainly making a strong comeback, given where we are with vaccinations and cases. I, I do anticipate some of that is going to spill over into cities internationally. Cities are strong attractions for tourism, you know, the Parises, the Londons of the world, those are always going to be strong tourism destinations. I think 2022 is going to be the year where we start seeing perhaps even, you know, close to pre-pandemic levels of travel to some of these destinations. Of course, again, I say that keeping in mind everything that's happening geopolitically, that's had a major hit on travel to Europe in particular. 
Well, this has been super sort of enlightening and makes me sort of think about our own vacation we've got planned and maybe it is time we got back to New York. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Sure. Sounds good, Doug. And hope that dream vacation happens soon for you guys. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks to Makaran Modi for joining us on this episode of Question of the Week. This episode was hosted and edited by BU Today Executive Editor Doug Most, engineered by Andy Halleck and produced by me, Dana Ferrante. Thanks for listening and see you in two weeks.